we will animate the cursor. So I'm gonna select that. But while we could be you know, working in any screen layout, I'm going to switch to the animation uh, uh, screen setup layout. So you can see you can access them with this or you can do control left, right to move between them. And you will note that not only do I have the, the uh, timeline, I also have two more window types here. This one is the graph editor, it used to be called IPO for uh, interpolation. And this one is the dope sheet. Now they sort of do a very similar thing. And you might think that the dope sheet is kind of redundant because uh, it's just a subset of what this is doing. But it's, it's just uh, looking at the same thing uh, from two different angles. The dope sheet only um, shows you keyframes. So the first thing that we want to do is to add some keyframes. So the animation will be, uh, we want to give the viewer some time to adjust to what they're seeing. So I think about a second would be good. And then we move to the thumbnail and we click it. I like to indicate clicking by scaling the cursor down so that uh, although it doesn't really do that on the desktop, uh, it's kind of a nice indication uh, in a mockup. Have. So the first thing is you might want to go to the global uh, render buttons again and where we set the, um, the frame rate there's also a much more important um, attribute to our animation that's the length of the animation. So for what we are doing now three seconds is about right because we wait a second and then around a second to move and then a quick click and then uh, some some gap afterwards as well so three seconds should be good so i can move in the timeline i can actually use the arrow keys as well left and right and I think it's sh yeah, shift up and down is uh, moving by 10 frames. So we go to um, frame number 25 and I will keyframe that because that is the state that I wanna begin with. And I do that by pushing the I key. Uh, on the 3D view that I've done this, this brings up a menu uh, and it, uh, uh, it applies to the currently selected object. So we're going to be moving, but I will use this holy trinity to make my life easier because I usually forget to add a keyframe and I have to go back and add something else. So because we're going to be um, moving and scaling, I'm just going to use this uh, triple keyframe. So it keyframes both the the movement, of essentially all the transformation that 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 we've uh, that we've uh, learned. Now, if I maximize this window you do that by control up uh, you see the dope sheet so it's it shows you like a tree view in here on the left side I have actually a mode of it enabled that I prefer uh, this this little thingy enables and disables I don't have anything else keyframed so I'm just gonna go to the first frame here and keyframe this so that you you, you know what I'm talking about and I go back so if I have this little thing selected, it only shows the selected object, which for the, for the uh, dope sheet, it's not as useful because dope sheet is usually about, uh, you know, retiming things and, and aligning uh, animation of multiple objects together. But especially for the, for the graph editor, you will have a ton of graphs all around. Once you start animating things, there's gonna be tons of things. This toggle button, uh, enables or disables showing only the graphs and uh, the keyframes uh, for the particularly selected object. So I, I can't live without that thing because um, you get lost in, in, in the complex graph otherwise. So that is a very useful thing to have. But going back, uh, it actually shows you uh, like a tree of all the, you see the object level uh, and um, you know you can have transformation of the object. You can animate pretty much anything. So there will be a material uh, animation, you know, uh, even texture. You could really do a lot. You could animate pretty much anything, even like moving objects in between layers. We haven't spoken about layers, but it's just 
pretty much every in Blender 2.5, pretty much anything you see in the UI, you can keyframe, you can animate, which is marvelous, marvelous. Okay, so that is the dome sheet. So you can see that uh, this is now what we're animating. This is the cursor. So we keyframed um, the cursor at one second, and then I'm gonna move it. So let's say I said that it's gonna be a second to move, so I'm gonna grab it and position it somewhere here, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna insert a keyframe by pressing I and selecting uh, the three. And you can see now it starts getting a little more complex here because uh, this is the graph editor, which again, you have a timeline on the x-axis and then you have some property on the y-axis. Of course, we're now seeing multiple properties at the same time, but if I would, there's probably a way to mute. I don't know how to do that. That's the scale. Uh, so if we did x location, so that would be the uh, the time, and this would be the x location of the object. So it uh, by default, um, Blender uh, doesn't do just a linear uh, transition. It eases in and eases out. You can change this if you select the curve. There is uh, interpolation mode. Yeah. So you can toggle. Uh, all the different modes uh, by pushing T. There's also a constant one, which kind of doesn't make sense, but it does, like if you want to uh, make something suddenly appear um, and that sort of stuff. Uh, so that is, that is, that is all you really need to know. Now we just need to tweak it. So we, we moved it and we can preview it. There's a playback button in the timeline window, which you can push, and uh, Blender is going to loop the animation. You can see that you can still interact with the UI. You can do anything. You can tweak, and which is something that we're going to do. You can see that uh, this, this is a very lazy person moving the mouse. It's pretty slow. So what I can do is I select the keyframe, I push G for grab, and I put it somewhere around 40. Um, well, let's just do it exactly 40. Um, so you can see it sped up and it did that while we were tweaking it. So it's Blender really shines when you are a person like me that doesn't know what he wants and just wants to iterate. So that's the first part. Now we want to stop there. Uh, I pushed, well, I mispushed and, and pushed space, but it doesn't exactly do what I intended. Uh, you press escape to stop the animation. And so now we want to make the click animation. So we stopped, and now we're gonna scale. To scale, I wanna you know, uh, keyframe uh, this thing one more time. And uh, I could essentially duplicate this, this keyframe, but we're gonna do that later. I'm gonna just do it the old fashioned way. And I'm gonna do this. And now something happened that we don't really want. You see that Blender interpolated uh, the ease in in a way that we don't want because it goes and it continues to go. I'm gonna uh, stop this and I'm gonna just scrub here. You can see that this is the final location, which is exactly the same as this one, but it go it continues to 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 go in the direction that we went because the curve goes like that, and we don't want that. So what what we do? Well, we, we fix it in the graph editor. Uh, again, you can do uh, you can use exactly the same uh, transformation tools. So I select the the handlebar here and press R to rotate, and I even it out like that. I could also like scale this thing. There's uh, one thing I don't really know how else to do it, but sometimes yeah, if you if you retract the the handlebar completely, it just goes bonkers. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's not very precise, but it works. So that would be Y. Uh, no, that was X. No, this is X, that was Y. Uh, yeah, this goes negative, right. Um, and I rotate. And there we go. So that's that's all we need now. And now uh, we scale the cursor down. Okay, so now we just need to scale it for, uh, for the click animation. Now we don't want to scale it the way it is right now. If you scale it, you can see that the, the, the object scales uh, based on the origin of it. Um, it used to be called pivot, now it's called origin, I think. Um, what we want is that, that transformation point to be at the tip of the arrow. To do that, 
we could um, just click here to reposition the, uh, the 3D cursor and uh, press Control Alt Shift C, or you can just search for it if you, if you, yeah, if you do exactly that. If you search for origin, there's a set origin, and now we do origin to 3D cursor, and now you can see that it updated. If you want to be more precise, which in this case it's not really true, you can actually set the 3D cursor to something by snapping. Snapping is really lovely. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but you want to make use of snapping. So the way you do that is um, you go into the edit mode of the object, you select the node that you want the, the, the new origin to be, uh, and you do Shift S for snap. And now you do the 3D cursor to select it. And now we're exactly there what we want. So now we can do the origin thing, uh, origin to 3D cursor, and you would be precise. But in our case, the, the tip is actually not uh, reflected by the, by the uh, mesh. So we're just going to do it by hand again. Control Alt Shift C, origin to 3D cursor. So now when I do the scaling transformation, of course, we somewhat uh, uh, changed our animation too because it, it, it changed but you can't really notice it so uh, if you scale you can see that it scales by that origin point so that's what what we want so uh, I move like three frames in advance and scale it down slightly and insert a keyframe and now I could go back and scale it up again I mean a forward and scale it up again, but I will now make use of the dope sheet. You can see that I have this state in here. So all I can do is duplicate this, this keyframe. I do that by shift D. It immediately goes into the grab mode. So I mean the, the transformation. So I move it like that. And now we should have, there is some scaling happening here because it does exactly the same thing as it did with uh, I think that's the yeah, X scale. So you can see that it goes up first before it scales down. So we're gonna straighten that out again by rotating. This is the same thing. I think it does for Z as well, which we don't really care about because nothing is happening on the on the Z axis, but still. So we do that, we wait and we click. There's a little bit of movement there because this isn't really precise. You can uh, use the snap um, functionality. If you rotate and hold control, it, it snaps by five degrees. But there is still something. What is this? This isn't really relevant but I still don't like it to go there's still some movement in X where's the X location weird well if I do V here no I was T linear okay did that solve our little thingy? Yes. Okay. So I, I just used the linear interpolation there to straighten it out. And um, that's it, essentially. So next time we're going to do something more complex. We're going to actually change up the scene a little because we're going to be animating this thumbnail. So what we're going to do is... Uh, um, sort of prepare multiple textures and we're going to be animating between them, transitioning between them. And then of course, we're going to throw in the same stuff that we did today, which is scaling and, and that sort of stuff. But material animation is something that we're going to be talking about next time. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Well, you will see me. I probably won't see you. <laughs> Cheers.